Buenas tardes and good evening to everyone who is joining us. And I know that a few more are starting to join. My name is Ines Velasquez McBride, and I am here with my friend and co pastor, Bobby Harrison. We are both uh, holy pastors of a church here in Southern California. We, um, Bobby and I, have been burdened about uh, the national. Um, uh, trauma and violence that our country has been experiencing in regards to uh, the death, the violent death and dehumanization of George Floyd in Minneapolis. We are burdened by that as one more um, example of systemic racism against uh, black bodies. And we are aware that um, the church has been historically complicit in covering up the evidence of systemic racism at large. And one of the ways that we want to come here is to provide a space for lament. God has given us lamentation as a spiritual practice and also as a cultural practice from many communities as well. We use lament to come before our creator and come together in community to say that what is happening is not right and to be able to protest before God and to protest together in our hearts to hold the pain that many of our black sisters and brothers are holding right now. And so me as a Nicaraguan, as a Latina, as a pastora, along with my brother here, we stand in solidarity with our black sisters and brothers and we cry out to God, who is the one that can hold our pain. We're in the midst of a global pandemic and what this crisis has exposed is that there have been some pre-existing and actually co-existing medical and spiritual and social conditions in our very broken humanity. As we have seen, there have been health disparities among the black and brown communities in the midst of a, of a pandemic. In the midst of a pandemic, this crisis has also exposed anti-Asian American rhetoric and there has been an uptick in hate and violent crimes and actions against our Asian American and Pacific Islander, Islander sisters and brothers. There's always been an anti-immigrant, an anti-indigenous, an anti-refugee community type of rhetoric as well. And so we want to lament all of that, but right now we're holding the death of the very violent death of the eight minutes that I observed of George Floyd, whose neck was suffocated recently this week. And so we come together to lament. We are creating a safe space and a brave space. We're gonna lead you all through a time of lament in this next hour. And we wanna welcome your participation as well. Bobby, do you have anything you would like to add? You pointed this out this week and I felt the weight of it while watching the video. Um, but Mr. Floyd, calling out for his mother. Um, Mr. Floyd thirsting. Mm. Um, those in power leaving him up on the cross to die. Um, those are the moments where um, you find the humanity that is being robbed in the midst of such violence um, and atrocity. And to see the contrast between his face and the cries of the people. Mm. Um, and then the officer uh, who is killing him in real time. Um, which remains stoic, which remains calculated, which remains, uh, I would say professional, but that's not uh, the professional way um, to carry out his profession. And then the cries of the people being unheard. As loud, as desperate, as raw, uh, appealing to humanity over and over, appealing to our shared common humanity over and over. And I, and I just thought this scene um, was so symbolic and such a 
terrifying way um, of the cries of people that will not be heard um, by those in power. Their voices will be heard. Um, their cries are not meaningless. Um, and so the, the call is to continue to cry, um, but to see how power, yeah, with the grip of death in its fingertips, is unwilling to relent. Um, hmm. Those are the images that, that have haunted me, that have been stuck with me, that, that I'm mm-hmm. lamenting. Mm. And just by naming them right now. Yeah. And I, I lament the, the modern images that you were describing. And um, unfortunately, they give me a picture of what happened in Genesis 4, the first murder that occurred in Genesis 4, where uh, Cain killed his brother Abel. And I have been struck ever since, ever since Ahmad Arbery. Uh, this video came out, I've been struck by the questions that God asks of Cain. God asks Cain, why are you angry? As I've seen the pain and, and the anger in faces, whether it's Ahmad Arbery's video, uh, George Floyd's video, God gets to ask that very difficult question, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? And God tells Cain, sin is crouching at your door and its desire is for you, but you must master it. And even after God says these words and has this conversation with with Cain, his own creation, Cain kills his brother Abel, the first murder between brothers. And so we're seeing a modern picture of Genesis 4. And then the Lord says to Cain, again, asks another question. Where is Abel, your brother? Where is George Floyd, your brother? Where is Ahmad Arbery, your brother? God gets to ask these hard questions. And he responds, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And God says, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And I am struck that the highest voice in all of creation, the voice of God is speaking and and also hearing what seems to be this lowest voice. It's not even the voice of Abel. It's the voice of the blood of this brother is crying out. So the blood has a voice and God gets to hear it. And so my lament right now, is that the voice of the blood of Ahmad Arbery is crying out, that the voice of George Floyd is crying out. And so as we come together in this moment of lament, I say, we hear that voice. We lament and we hear the voices of our brothers. And there's so many other names that we we couldn't even mention all the hashtags. But right now we're, we're hearing the voice of George Floyd crying out. Thank you for the reminder, Bobby, that he cried out and said, I can't breathe. He also said, I'm thirsty. Can you give me something? I just need some water. And it just reminded me of Jesus on the cross also asking for water. And instead they give him vinegar to quench his thirst. And so we come here to listen to the voice of the blood of our brother. And we know and we say and we, we say and we stand in solidarity and we say, we, I am my brother's keeper. And together we're saying that as well, Bobby and I, and all of those of you who are listening, we invite you to say, I am my brother's keeper. And I am Brianna Taylor's, my sister's keeper. I am. Because here in Genesis 4 is where everything broke down, broken down humanity. And so I lament, and I invite you to lament as well, to let your tears run through. All of us are carrying grief. We're housing grief from different habitats, and racial trauma is only one of many that we're carrying right now. So I invite you to listen to your body, to listen to your tears, and to grieve together during this time.
I'm going to also <laughs> keep a disclaimer that I'm going to be very raw, very real, and very vulnerable. So this is, is not a pre-organized, ordered, and clean liturgical service. We're just going to create our own psalm of lament in this hour, and we're going to do it together the best, the best way we know how. So let me open us up in prayer or continue in prayer, really, because God is listening to us. Señor y Padre Celestial, te alabamos y te exaltamos. Porque podemos venir delante de tu presencia con todo nuestro lamento. Our God and our Creator and our Heavenly Father, we do praise you and thank you that we can come before you with our lament. So God, Holy Spirit, lead us during this time. We welcome all of our feelings. We welcome all of our emotions because you created them in order to have access to us. And so God, we come and we lament that we even have to have this moment, God. But we come before you, our creator, who understands our broken humanity best. And we come in community with those who are joining us even now and who will join us later. We come to lament. Come Holy Spirit during this time. We ask that this would be holy ground, that this would be safe ground, that this would be sacred ground to lament and cry out to you, God, the one that can hold us and uphold us during this national and perpetual crisis of systemic racism. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I said earlier, we're going to have a time of lament through three different movements. And I'm going to be using a booklet called The Book of Uncommon Prayers. They were prayers written by a Japanese American. His name is Kenji Kuramitsu. And he wrote these prayers. We're going to read three of these prayers in, in these three different movements. He wrote these prayers for Black Lives Matter. And so we're going to honor the, the creator of these um, prayers and say they belong to him. And we're going to use them as a way to, to pray when sometimes we may not even have words for the grief that we are carrying, for the lament that we are carrying. So I'm going to lead us in this first prayer that Kenji wrote, prayers after a shooting at the hands of police. And I'm going to lead us in a time and invite you in the chat room after I'm done for us to interact and have prayers of lament and say, Lord, I lament and invite you to write it out. And I'm going to try to see what you're re writing and read it out loud. And as we pray, I'd like for all of us to respond and say, Lord, hear our prayer. Even if I can't hear your voice, if we could just say it all together. There's power in that solidarity. So I'm going to begin with Kenji Kuramitsu's first prayer, an uncommon prayer. I wish it was unnecessary. Prayers after a shooting at the hands of police. O oh, protector and servant of the oppressed, whose child was pierced with metal by militarized police, we know that wherever there is a broken body, like the broken body and the broken neck of our brother George Floyd, I'm adding to his prayer. Wherever there are tears, you are there. May your holy and life-giving spirit so move every human heart that all racial barriers that divide us would crumble. May those who have been ordained to protect and serve or repent of their violence, that they may join with us in the new life you have promised in Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. So I'd like to invite you now in the chat room if you feel comfortable to share your lament. I'm just going to pray as the Spirit leads me and share my lament as well. God, I lament. 
God, I love mint. The eight long minutes George Floyd had to sit on the floor calling out for his mother. I lament the pain that he had to endure. And if you'll respond with me and say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, I lament that Ahmad Arbery couldn't peacefully go on a run through a neighborhood without his body being assaulted by bullets. I lament his tragic death. Lord, hear our prayer. God, I lament for Ahmad's mother, Wanda Cooper Jones, that has had to live with this injustice for since February. The one who gave birth on Mother's Day and for every Mother's Day after this, that will not ever be the same. I lament her grief and I remember her name wherever she is right now. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, I lament the hate crimes and the hate speech and the hate actions against my Asian American Pacific Islander sisters and brothers during this time, one that was deeply rooted since the beginning of the Chinese Exclusion Act. I lament for my Asian American and Asian descent sisters and brothers. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, I lament, as I learned this week in my own ignorance, that there is still no running water in some Native American reservations, and that help has not truly arrived there, even in the midst of this crisis. And it's just layers and years of injustice against our indigenous sisters and brothers. Lord, I lament my own ignorance about that. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, I lament the anti-immigrant and anti-refugee narrative. I lament the deaths of COVID-19 in detention centers near the border and the inhumane treatment of mass incarceration, even in the midst of this crisis. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to invite those of you in the Facebook chat to share your lament. And I love to give voice to your voice, if you allow me to do that, to speak for you, not over you, but for you. If you have a lament as well, to write it out, I am, I'm trying to keep up with the chat that is here. And I'd like to welcome your pain and welcome your grief and welcome your lament. And if you have no words for your grief, you can just write that as well. 
you can say, I have no words. And that will be a prayer as well. I'm going to repeat what my sister September Penn is saying. We pray for God's hand of protection over all of our children. And together we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, September. I'm going to repeat what Ryan Borden is sharing. I lament how our health system disproportionately has underserved Black Americans. And together we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, brother. My sister, Aretha Scruggs, I'll share what she is sharing. I lament for the African American community waiting for justice in our weariness, grief, and tired tears. And together with you, sister, we say, Lord, hear our prayer. These are the words from Psalm 5. Listen to my words, Lord. Consider my lament. Hear my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my request before you and I wait expectantly. You are not a God who is pleased with wickedness. You are not a God who is pleased with wickedness. Mm. With you, evil people are not welcome. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful, you, Lord, detest. But I, by your great love, can come into your house. In reverence, I bow down towards your holy temple. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Mm. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues, they tell lies. Declare them guilty, O God. Declare them guilty, O oh God. This Let is the word of the Lord. Downfall. Banish them from their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. My sister Stephanie Diamond, I will repeat what she is writing. I lament all the times I don't see my own white privilege. Thank you, my sister, for that honest confession. It is welcome in this place. And we repeat with her, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. My friend and sister and fellow colleague, Julie Tai, says, I pray for Janelle Austin, who is headed to Minneapolis to protest alongside her family. I lament that she has to put her black body on the line in hopes that she might be heard. I lament that we don't listen while black folk are alive. And we say with Julie and with Janelle, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord. In fact, we, we stop right now for our sister Janelle. We ask for protection over her beautiful and brilliant black body right now as she goes with her family to Minneapolis to protest her own dignity. 
We ask that your angels would surround her before, behind, and around. We ask that you would take care of her and all that are going with her and all that are protesting just for basic human dignity and basic humanity. In Jesus' name, Lord, hear our prayer. Rosie Archilla says, I lament for our African-American brothers and sisters who are affected by the tragedy of George Floyd, their pain and fear. And together with Rosie, we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Claudia Salazar, hola hermana, hola amiga. She says, I lament my ignorance and ways I have tried to ignore the pain of my black brothers and sisters. And we say with Claudia, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Feel free to continue to share any of your lament and I'll try to read them out loud as they come in. I actually want to stop and pause in the spirit of lament for one minute to remember the memory of George Floyd. And so I'd like to invite you to just pause for a minute of silence for George Floyd, which will be nothing compared to the eight minutes of struggle where she, he tried to breathe for eight minutes. So let's just feel this one minute of silence. Listen to your body and listen to your breath. And if you get distracted, return to your body and return to your breath. And if you get distracted, just say his name out loud, George Floyd, in this next minute of silence. I'll bring us back in a minute.
as we continue in this lament and continue in a different movement of lament, I want to invite my brother and pastor, um, Bobby, to read this next prayer. And whatever you want to say about that, Bobby, just feel led as, as the Spirit leads us. Because unless we name things that we lament, uh, the Spirit can't comfort us, right? And so we also need to name the sins that we lament so that we can both be spiritually proactive as well as socially active to be healed of these systemic sins. And so, Bobby, um, if you want to begin by reading this next prayer and adding something, however you want to feel led, um, let's go into the next time of prayer as well. Uh, in our dear brother David Swanson's new book, Rediscipling the White Church, when he talks about proclamation, uh, kingdom preaching that'll move from cheap diversity to true solidarity, one of the most critical aspects of it uh, for white churches, for predominantly majority uh, white brothers and sisters who follow Jesus Christ, um, is to be specific, to name the atrocities, to name the brokenness, to name the evil, to name the sin. Um, and so in that, a major part of lament that white brothers and sisters can carry is confession. In specific, in the midst of that. And so we specifically will call out to God through this prayer from the booklet of Uncommon Prayers for the end of white supremacy. Healer God, whose church predates the doctrines of white supremacy by more than a thousand years, empower us with words and wisdom to confront all racial divisions sown by colonizers and cultural elites. Teach us, alongside all your saints, to remember our people, all people, in our bones. To stitch their hymns and heritage into our hearts. Help us each to reconnect with the cultural heritage that birthed us, instead of the violent racial categories into which we have been forced, into which my white brothers and sisters, my ancestors, um, those who walk alongside of us here and now, uh, me in my own flesh, racial categories um, that we have imposed, mm. we have empowered, that we have shackled. God, we do come to you in confession and in desperate hope for repentance, for that metanoia, that change of heart and mind that'll actually flow through our lives. Real change, transformative change, societal change, change for children. I confess for a world that white supremacy has created uh, where a dear friend of mine, a black man my age, has to change his jogging route to be in the most public possible setting instead of feeling the freedom to just run, to just have the 
the freedom to just run. So I lament and I confess. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear white brothers and sisters, uh, compassion means to suffer with. And I fear we're afraid of compassion because of our fragility. We know that compassion costs us. It costs us power. It costs us pride. It costs us privilege. And that's a price that far too often we're not willing to pay. But compassion is costly. And we serve a God who's willing to pay that price. We follow in the footsteps of a Jewish rabbi. Amen. Who is willing to pay that cost. We serve a Jesus who had all power at his disposal and yet didn't grasp for it, didn't hold on to it, but laid it down because he trusted in a higher power. Not even his own. Compassion is costly. But what did you think following Jesus was? Hmm. Amen. Listen, I didn't I didn't know this road. I didn't know how costly this discipleship of following this Jesus was. I didn't know it until I heard the cries of my brothers and sisters. I didn't know the pain until I, I heard their pain. And I didn't know their pain until I got near to them. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. And even when I got near, I had to trust that the reality that they were speaking to me was perhaps more true than the reality I've lived in my own life. What I'm talking about is a disruption in, in your whole conscious, subconscious, spirit, reality, yes. history, yes. memory, as yes. a brother. It, it all had to be not just a heart transplant, but a mind transplant, a memory transplant. It's like getting to see the movie of your life back played over again. And all you saw was the montage filled with the beautiful music and then realizing there was a, you turned the camera just this way. Mm. There was a whole other story running right here, right beside you the whole time. And so, yes, my sister, I stand in agreement with you. Words I've heard you speak. That we, as white brothers and sisters, deeply desire proximity to people of color on Sunday mornings in a pew. We are absent in proximity to the person and their pain come Monday. Mm. Hmm. I'll sit by you on Sunday. I'll sing with you on Sunday. I'll hold your hand and pray for you on Sunday. But come Monday, come George Floyd. Holy Spirit, 
awaken the sleepers. Hmm. Awake, O oh sleeper, and rise from the dead. Those who are stuck in a slumber. Awaken. Awaken. As we have lamented the brokenness of the violent police brutality, which is just a manifestation of broken systems, as we lament and have named the sin of white supremacy that has been historical as well as social and spiritual, often perpetuated by the church. Um, the song that rises up in me is a word, is a song in Spanish. Remember I said at the beginning that this is not a prepared liturgy, but if you are able, I'd like to sing these three words as a prayer. And the words are sananos, which means heal us, restauranos, which means restore us, and avivanos, which means either revive us or awaken us. So sananos, restauranos, avivanos. And as we continue to lament um, and pray, I just like to pray those, song, those words as an affirmation and as a covering over all that we have been sharing just now. I want to read Eric's, Eric Ga Gamel's lament, my neighbor back at home, old neighbor back at home in Arkansas. I lament the inequality in our nation and how fear grips my soul and the safety of my black sons. Lord, with Eric, we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you, Stephanie, for writing the words in Spanish so that you can see them there. Sananos, restauranos, avivanos. And the, the refrain goes like this. Sananos, restauranos, avivanos, oh Dios. Repeat after me. Sananos, restauranos, avivanos, oh Dios. Sananos, restauranos, avivanos. Oh, Dios. Because when somebody in the familia hurts, we all hurt and we say, Sananos, restauranos, avivanos, oh, Dios. One last time with me. Sananos. Restauranos, avivanos, oh Dios. The words of that refrain are in the plural because we are a collective, we're one body with many parts. And what we have done today is we've realized that when our arm gets chopped off in the body of Christ, the, the mind and the, the head goes out and then the mouth says, that hurt. That's what lament is like when somebody in the body, which we are conjoined by Christ. When the members of the body get dismembered by sin, we say, God put us back together and heal us and restore us and awaken us and revive us because we belong to one familia. So God, even as we finish this time and continue to lament, we ask that you would heal us because the blood has not lost its power to heal us. 
Hey. The blood has not lost its power, church, to heal us. Amen. The blood of Jesus can heal the hostility in spiritual ways, in social ways, and in systemic ways. So we ask that you would heal us as a body, and then we ask that the body would move towards healing. So that it's not just words, but action as well. in each and every one of our communities. Palabras y acción. Words and action. Because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. So if you ask, where was God in this situation? Sometimes God doesn't show up because the people don't show up. So church, show up. Show up. Show up. In solidarity. When my primo hurts, I hurt. When a cousin hurts, I hurt. We are one familia, one human race. And that is stronger because the creator created us this way. There is no us and them. There is only we and our. So I make your pain my pain. I say that to my sisters and brothers, African-American sisters and brothers. I'd like to finish off by saying the last prayer that we want to pray. It's actually a prayer of solidarity. Again, if you have just joined us, these are prayers by uh, Japanese American Kenji Kuramitsu from the Book of Uncommon Prayers that he wrote for Black Lives Matter. So Bobby and I will read this together as we finish. For Solidarity Between Various Peoples is the title of this prayer. Various people, but really one people. Mm. Amen? Mm. God, creator God, you have bound all of us together. Oh, seamstress of human souls. In a single garment of destiny. So that whatever affects one affects all. You created all peoples in your image. Do not allow the fruits of white supremacy to bear competition or ranking systems among our communities of color. But grant us humility and kindness as we labor together in obedience to your call. Through the strength of Christ, who transcends every boundary. Identifying with all who are despised. And together we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Take a deep breath, friends. Deep inhale. We have the privilege of being able to inhale right now. And exhale. Take another deep breath again. Deep inhale. And deep exhale. And as we close this time together, I just want to thank you for, for showing up. Amen. We pray that during this time, I know that for me it has been hmm. a, a sacred ground type of place, a Moses type of place. We've had to take off our shoes of our feet and come before this burning bush who is God our Father, and that he has heard our lament. And as we are lamenting together, we're also healing together. Thank you for showing up to the space fully and honestly and raw and vulnerably.
I began a psalm earlier, and I'll just finish it now. That would be good. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Their throat is an open grave. With the tongues they tell lies. Declare them guilty, O God. Let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins. For they have rebelled against you. And then this is how the psalmist ends. Hmm. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them. Spread your protection over Janelle, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Go forth as the body of Christ. That those who love your name may rejoice in you. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Hmm. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, friends and family near and far for joining us. Um, We're going to uh, leave this. This time has been recorded. So if you wanted to share this, if you needed to share with someone and you think it would be helpful to have an, a dedicated time for lament and for prayer and for grief, feel free to share this, um, this link. We're, we're going to leave it up on my page. Um, again, we love you. We stand by you to our sisters and brothers, uh, African-American sisters and brothers. Uh, thank you, Fa Pastor Bobby, for coming and showing up. Pastora, um, thank you for leading us. Amen. It was a joy to lead us, friend. Thank you for following. <laughs> a joy to follow. <laughs> we love each and every one of you. And uh, if there's anything you need from us, I don't know, reach out to us if you need to, if you're a white sister and brother that wants to talk to another white brother uh, that has, do it, has done the work and continues to do the work, Bobby is here. Um, this is a good time to, to speak with white sisters and brothers who are maybe a step ahead. I'm not saying that he has it all together, just a step ahead um, if you want to reach out. And if you're a friend or sister or brother of color, uh, I hope that this space also has been a good space to grieve uh, together in, in comunidad and in conjunto. So if you need anything from us, we're here as pastors, uh, imperfect pastors, followers of Jesus, doing the best we can in the midst of this crisis. But we are here with you. We're not going anywhere. We're doing this together. We're here with you. We stand by you and we're here for you as best we can as imperfect followers of Rabbi Jesus. So thank you for joining us for this time. And uh, may God keep us and hold us together until we see each other again. Amen. Hermana, te quiero mucho. Dios te bendiga. Yo también te quiero mucho, hermano. God bless you too. Love you so much. <laughs>